hello and welcome to our latest Passport in the Past recording. This, I think we think this is the 15th one in the series and it's called Pet Project because we're looking at pets past and present. So we're looking at stories of pets that we have here in the archives and we want to hear stories about the pets that you have at home. Um, so today you're going to be doing some activities and you're going to need a couple of things. So first of all, most importantly, we're asking you to bring along a pet, a plant or a toy, um, anything that you look after. And we're going to be doing that in a few slides time. Um, so um, that would be great. Um, if you've managed to print out your passport to the past resources, then that's great. We're going to be using them later on in the session. Um, if you haven't had a chance to print them out, please don't worry. It won't stop you from participating. Um, you will need a pencil and several pieces of paper as well. Thank you. So hello and welcome to today's session. So we're going to be meeting your pet, your plant or the special thing that you look after and hopefully you're going to be telling us about what makes that so special to you. We're going to be hearing about a particularly unusual pet, um, John Daniel, who was a gorilla who lived as part of a family in a place near Stroud called Yuli, and we've got a, a film of this, quite an extraordinary film to see of him. And we've also got some fun activities lined up for you. So the reason that we're doing it this uh, particular month is because July is Carers Month and it has a focus on people who look after other people. Some children are carers, they might help to look after parents who are ill or other relatives. And we know that children need time to have fun and they need time away from their worries. In the past, it was not unusual for children to play a caring role, very often taking care of younger brothers or sisters when their parents were away at work. And in the modern age, um, quite often the first experience we have of caring for something or someone um, comes from when we get our first pet or a special toy. Or for some children, it might be nurturing a plant or having a patch of garden. So now's the time that we'd like to hear about the special thing that you take care of. If you're in a classroom right now, it might be a good time to turn to the person next to you and ask them whether they have any pets or special toys or things like that and have a chat about it. So we're going to tell you first of all a little bit about dogs. So dogs amazingly were domesticated at least 14,000 years ago. And we know this from dogs wearing collars found in grave sites. Uh, because humans started selectively breeding dogs for certain characteristics a very long time ago, dogs are the most different looking of all animals and it means that, for example, that little tiny bald ch chihuahua that you can see there on the left has just as much right to call herself a dog as this huge hairy mastiff. Horses also have a very long standing relationship with man and we started to put horses to work for us at least 6,000 years ago. Um, cats have lived with us for a very long time, at least 9,500 years, and we know that the ancient Egyptians actually worshipped cats, and there are many, many images of cats to be seen in the pyramids. Um, Romans, we know, kept small dogs. We we know that they used to carry these small dogs around with them. We think that they were pets, but they may also have had a job of killing rats. And here we can see a really cute example of a modern handbag dog. Um, it's not just modern celebrities, though, who carry around their little dogs in special bags. Um, evidence that we have from the past suggests that the ancient Romans actually began this practice. Um, so here's another pic picture from the archives here. And this is a little girl who I'm guessing is probably about five or six years old, quite a small child. And she's had to leave her home in wartime. She's possibly been evacuated from a city out into the countryside. And we can see what she's taken with her. What she's um, holding on to very hard is her special toys. Um, we thought we'd include this picture because we get so much comfort from precious toys and pets, um, especially if we're feeling a bit sad or if we're worried about something. And we get that in return for the care that we show to them. And here we have one of my favourite pictures in the archives. So this is a really cute photo from our collections of a cat who decided to adopt orphaned pairs of fox cubs. Uh, it's not just humans who are programmed to care for others, but animals as well. And here's a selection, just a small selection of the toys which people brought along to the session we did a few months ago about favourite toys and games. Now, some of these toys, and I, the, the teddy right at the back there is a good example, was brought in 
by people who are now well into their 80s and have loved these toys and looked after them since they were children themselves. So I think that teaches us how special these toys and things can become. Um, so going back to cats again, um, here we have the cat-headed ancient Egyptian dirty bastard. Now she was the goddess of good health and enjoyment. Now if your pet was a god or a goddess, what would they be worshipped for? Now my cat's called Marmite and she sleeps all the time, so I think she would definitely be the goddess of sleep. How about you, Kate? Well, my old dog Ruby um, would be the goddess of food and being greedy because she is, I can't think of anyone a more greedy creature that I've ever met in my whole life than Ruby. <laughs> So here is a little dog um, figurine from Roman Britain. So this is about 2000 years old and a figurine is a very small carving. So it's a, it, a small statue. And the fact that, that things like this were made in um, Roman Britain and that, that they still survive today gives us some idea that how important dogs were um, in Roman British society. And we also have this very interesting newspaper extract, and this is about from 300 years ago, and it's about a lost dog, and I'm gonna put my glasses on and read this to you. Um, it says, whereas a white greyhound with yellow ears and a yellow stripe upon the left shoulder and a bone displaced in a toe of his right foot was lost on the 27th of April. So this person is just giving a good description of their dog that they've lost. And they're also offering a reward for anyone who can find the dog and return it to them. And it got us thinking about what we might do today if we lost a precious pet. And we'd probably put it up on social media somewhere, wouldn't we? So I say perhaps with a photograph of the dog or cat, which obviously they couldn't do that then. So they had to give a good description and people still offer rewards for lost animals. And didn't your mum find one recently, Gemma? She did, yes. Yeah. So um, only last week my mum returned a cat to somebody who lost it over a year ago, which is amazing, isn't it? And that owner must have been really sad without their pet. But fortunately, they have managed to um, match them back up again, which is, which is great news. Uh, so here we have a beautiful picture of an owner and its dog and this is Bessie the Welsh Collie who won a pr prize at a dog show in 1960 um, and the reason we like this picture so much is because you can clearly see the bonds between the two of them and they both look very proud don't they. So here's um, a hollyhock flower and hollyhocks um, are this is the month of July and this is when hollyhocks are in flower um, and they, they're usually quite a tall flowering plant but this one is extremely tall extraordinarily tall it's obviously at least twice as tall as yeah. that lady isn't it who's standing at the base of it so that made us think that somebody has taken very very good care of this hollyhock for it to get so tall and here we have Frisky the rabbit. Um, now this rabbit was taken by its owner to a special church service that was for animals and this was near Stroud over 60 years ago. And Kate and I were having a chat about this early and we remember both of us from when we were much younger um, taking pets to church services and we wondered whether they still take place today and that might be something that you might want to have a chat about. Oh, here's another favourite one of mine. And this is another photograph from our collections. I think this was a photograph from the Citizen newspaper. And it shows a fox cub who's obviously snuggling up to a, um, a cuddly toy. And we felt that this showed about the need for comfort that we all have, humans and animals, all like being comfortable and warm and feeling comforted. And we're now moving on to unusual pets. And as promised, um, we said that we would chat a little bit about um, a very famous gorilla. Um, it was called John Daniel, and it lived as part of a family near Stroud with one of the ch with uh, one of the family's children. Um, this was over a hundred years ago. Um, what we'd like you to do now is to click on the link that you can see below there and you'll be able to see part of a, um, a silent video. It's about seven minutes long. And what it will do is it will show you lots of images, lots of bits of video um, about the gorilla, um, particularly interacting with the family, both with the children and with older members of the family, drinking beer and having tea and all this kind of stuff. Um, and we'd like you to have a think about how you feel when you see um, a video like this. Does it make you want to have your own unusual pet um, or perhaps you feel something different about it? 
We haven't really talked very much about working animals, but we have lots and lots of um, things in our collections at the archives about working animals, obviously. Sheep dogs, farm dogs, and a lot about working horses. And here's a, here's a clip from the newspaper about Bonnie, um, who was a working horse who won the RSPCA prize for the best cared for working horse at the Cheltenham Horse Show in 1933. So that's getting on for 100 years ago. Now, from the look of Bonnie, we think she must have worked as um, a, a, a cart horse or a carriage horse pulling some heavy um, things behind her on a, on a cart or a carriage um, and you can see that she's very beautifully looked after her she's had her mane all plaited um, and her, if you look at her owner you, we think you can see how proud he is of Bonnie his lovely working horse so we're now going to move on to a couple of activities that you can do. Um, so the first one is called Pets ABC. Um, and as you can see, there's a list of the alphabet letters um, down one side. And what we want you to have a go at doing is um, trying to think of an animal for each letter. Or if you can't think of an animal, you might want to think of a plant or even a toy. Um, but to think of one of those for each letter of the alphabet. And the way it works is that if you're in a classroom setting or if there's a few of you doing this is that once you've had a go and I suggest you give yourself about five minutes um, what you can then do is stop and go through it and if you manage to get an animal that nobody else has then you get a point for it um, and so on and then at the end you can tally them up and see who wins so if you've got time um, our other activity is um, a story about your pet or a pet that you wish you had or a pet perhaps that you used to have. So um, I've written the, the first line of a story, and this is about my dog Ruby, about her being the greediest dog in the world. And there's nothing, literally nothing that she won't eat. And then I would pass it on to Gemma and Gemma would say the next sentence. And then we go round um, and the last person has to finish off the story in a nice, neat, believable way. Um, so this is going to be this is our last session before we break for the summer. Um, so we think we can go as crazy as we like, really. Um, and so let's let's see how we get on. Thank you, Kate. So that really brings us to the end of our session. Um, this is very sadly is our final monthly passport to the past. Um, so can you believe it? We've been actually doing this for about a year, year and a half. Um, and we have really, really enjoyed doing them. Um, we've learned a lot, haven't we, Kate? Yes, we have, um, we've met some really nice people doing it. Um, we've had some great guests on um, and it has been just so incredibly enjoyable. Um, but it's not all stopping there. Um, what we really want to do is to do things Things, um, where we get to meet people in person um, so we're going to be having lots of events at Gloucestershire Archives at the Heritage Hub um, and what that means is particularly there's going to be a lot of Saturday events but other events as well um, and what we'd really like is for you to come and meet us uh, meet us here uh, that would be fantastic um, we're also going to be holding three big online events every year so that'll be one every school term um, so it'll be a bit like this but much bigger um, and we might even get to feature some of your favourite characters from the past. Um, finally, we'd love you to keep in touch. Um, please do sign up to our mailing list to find out more about our exciting plans for the future. And we wish you all very well. Have a good summer. Goodbye. Bye.